We are at the Lance factory because we're interested in some of their lightweight towables and possibly one of their truck campers. We saw some of their units at the Pomona RV show, really liked what they had to offer. So we wanted to come down to the factory because they do tours on Wednesday and Jim is gonna show us around. We're gonna start by going through this whole area and check out how they do things from start to end. Thank you guys for coming by. My name is Jim Waters. I'm the marketing coordinator here at Lance. We're gonna start here in our research and development, our engineering department. This is where we use a program called SolidWorks to set forth the designs that are going to implement and become our Lance trailers, travel trailers, truck campers, and toy haulers. Welcome to our manufacturing facility. We began producing here around the year 2000. Um, we now build toy haulers as well as travel trailers from this facility. So we are here now in our lamination room. We are seeing a sidewall behind us actually finishing up the process of, of creating the sandwich that is a lance sidewall. Each wall is pinch rolled three separate times and then ready to be stored and sent over to the assembly line for assembly onto a completed unit. Here we're looking at our glue machine actually running our composite paneling, Asdale. Okay. Asdale is a fiberglass uh, bonded with poly polypropylene. It is a synthetic wood substitute in our sidewalls. Some of its main benefits are it is extremely light, much lighter than wood. It also will not absorb any water in the event of a leak. It, will, it is also a much higher R, R value and insulation value compared to traditional wood. As far as Asdale is concerned, um, is this just in the walls or is it also ceiling floor? We are utilizing Asdale in all of our side walls. Okay. Uh, that is including uh, our slide outs as well. For another main thing to talk about in this room is the fact that we're utilizing all non-toxic glues and adhering the Asdale in our fiberglass and our block of foam. Okay. Uh, you know, it's very important to us because these RVs are smaller uh, spaces to eliminate formaldehyde and toxic chemicals within that space because you're going to be spending a lot of time in that. Great. As we continue to look at the materials in the sidewalls of our units, we get to our the, the center of the Lance Lamination Sandwich, which is our block of foam. Uh, we're utilizing this in all of our units. So if you actually play with this and try and squeeze it, it is a very uh, hot, high quality, uh, very lightweight insulation uh, material for us. So we're now in front of one of our CNC machines, a computer numeric coat cutting machine. Uh, this is a router. Uh, a very technologically advanced router. So the computer behind us here is running that SolidWorks program that we talked about. All of the dimensions set forth within that program is being implemented by this laser-guided router. Uh, what it's going to begin doing in a second here is grooving, uh, setting all of the grooves for our framing, our wiring, as well as speakers. This is actually the ceiling that we're looking at of the, of the unit right now. One of the next stages of our lamination process is after the routing was done that we saw in the CNC machines, we're going to be going through this red tent behind us after all of our framing has been inset into the wall. In this red tent, we're going to begin welding that frame together. Now remember, before that, we were running wires, all the wires that need to be inset within the wall. Okay. We're also adding a second heated layer of glue under all framing pieces. So our frame is not only welded to itself and affixed to the other framing portions of the wall, but it is also glued to the wall itself. You'll see that we pinch roll all of these areas three times. We already saw the initial pinch roll after the block foam is adhered to the ad sale and the fiberglass. We're now about to see the second pinch roll after we glued down the frame and then we're going to head back into the lamination room to cap off the other side of the Asdale and have a finished wall. How does building a wall in this fashion kind of set you apart from some of your competitors? Our triple pinch, pinch roll system really ensures that our lamination is exactly the way it needs to be. Okay. That our Asdale, our fiberglass, and our block foam are completely adhered to our framing and really forming one solid piece with a very high insulation value. Okay, great. We're now standing in front of our custom loom boards. So what we're looking at here is a wall or an interior portion. We're making sure that we're running all that wiring, creating a wire harness, and testing that before it goes into the unit to make sure that when we go to turn that light on, that it, it's functioning. So this is going to come off and actually go into a wall? It's going to create one of these harnesses that we see back here. Okay. Now this is for an 850 truck camper, the entire wiring system for a given wall. 
We're now about to enter our cabinetry department. Uh, all of our cabinetry goes through the two CNC machines that you see behind me here. Uh, both of these machines can work through an entire pallet of our light ply wood. We source light ply from either Spain or Italy because it is a very lightweight, high quality maple wood, which is also free of any formaldehyde glues and uh, is a very high quality, lightweight product. These two machines are the most advanced that we're currently employing. They have the ability to change between five different drill bits depending on what it is they're cutting. They could be cutting the side wall of a cabinet while at the same time cutting a portion of a drawer or cutting an area for an interior wall. Uh, after all of our, our, our puzzle pieces for cabinetry exit the CNC machines, they come here for finishing work. What we're doing here is we're taking the time to sand and stain all of those pieces of cabinetry that you're going to be able to see. We're now in the upholstery department. As a manufacturer, we try and create anything we, we can with our own hands here. That's why we produce the majority of all of our upholstery here in-house. We source fabric. You'll see we're currently working on window balances. Uh, the majority of the interior you see we actually make with our own hands. Now we find ourselves in our slide-out uh, assembly area. Uh, this is a cool place that, where you can actually look into a completed wall pan. It's important to note that our slide-out wall panels go through the same process that our, the overall box of our coach does. This okay. is still Asdale paneling. You can actually look at that block foam now in the heart of the, the lamination sandwich we were talking about. You can also look at our framing here. We are a 100% aluminum frame. Our, uh, our entire frame is coated with a, uh, a chemical called allodyne, which is going to prevent uh, electrolysis and rust. Okay. We're also using all like metals when we assemble our product. So whenever we're going into an aluminum frame, we make sure that we're using an aluminum screw. So a common question that we get very often is, why are our truck campers as expensive, if not more expensive than our travel trailers? Designing a truck camper is a much more intricate process than designing a travel trailer. Okay. One example of this is the holding tanks that we're looking at here. Truck campers, by virtue of trying to make a variety of floor plans, you have to have a variety of one-off parts that may only be for one single floor plan. So now that we're entering the assembly section of the factory, we see the, the parts that we saw earlier in cabinetry production. That side of the factory is feeding in and they're going to provide the materials for what becomes a full cabinetry system that goes into one of our coaches. So we build our travel trailers from the ground up. We begin with our frame, our axles, our wheels and tires. We do purchase our frame from a supplier. We assemble it here. This is a stamped steel frame. Okay. It is hook bolted and not welded together. Welds can crack and rust and fail over time. We've found that this is a superior as well as being a more lightweight design. Got it. To that frame, we strap on our Dexter torsion axle. Okay. Our torsion axle is lower to the ground, creating a better towing experience. It also allows for a degree of independent articulation that leaf springs do not. If you look at our axle down in the tire here, you'll see there's a cylinder going into the wheel. Mm -hmm. In that cylinder, you have a square bar. Around that bar are rubber torsion ports. So when you're going down the road, and you hit a pothole with one of these tires, those cords are going to twist within that cylinder and actually cause that entire torsion arm to dampen that pressure. So you're, when you roll down the road, you hit a pothole with one of these tires, it's only going to affect that. When, that independent articulation allows for much better tow on or off the road. Got it. So those remain stable and these individually the moved. Got it. One of the big things that sets our company apart, and a lot of customers come to us specifically, is because of our Four Seasons package. Okay. With our uh, enclosed tank design, you'll see you have your holding tank enclosed in an additional enclosure with insulation. We're then tying that in, into our furnace and into your heating system. So you're making sure as long as you have LP, as long as you have propane, you're gonna be able to heat not only your coach, but also your holding tanks for uses in well below freezing temperature. You'll notice things are starting to happen very quickly. Uh -huh. uh, we have all of those pre-production things done and we're putting them in the unit. We're beginning to run all of the uh, piping system. You see our plumbing system is made from a PEX line, PEX plastic. Okay. Uh, the cool thing about PEX plastic is it allows for a little bit of expansion and contraction in the event that you do have a pipe freeze. Hopefully it's not gonna bust the whole system. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, PEX plastic actually bends. 
or we, we can preheat and bend it, eliminating a lot of the connection points okay. that can cause possible leaks. We're going through and all of the appliances are being installed. We're even going to begin to see graphic installation. Now we're really beginning to see a Lance travel trailer come to shape. We're, we're getting the floor down. You'll see we're bolting the chassis directly to the aluminum framing and the flooring. We're also going to, in just a second, begin putting on a sidewall. You'll see we do that with a system of extrusions. So you'll see that we have that tubed aluminum framing also with an extra piece up here. That's, a, that's our aluminum extrusion. We're making sure whenever we're sinking frame to frame that we're going aluminum to aluminum with an aluminum screw. So it is through this process of, uh, of extrusions that we begin to square off and secure a, our overall box. Now what is different on your truck campers versus your towables? There's a ton of differences. You know, we Truck campers are really our, our pedigree and the bread and butter of what built our company. And we can go in and head over and, and look at some of those uh, changes. Yeah, let's take a look. So the main differentiating factor is the way that we secure the frame. Okay. In a truck camper, because you have the basement of a truck camper, basically on top of that, you have your living box. Okay. So it is a, uh, a through a process called Lance Lock using aluminum extrusions. We have to not only secure that lower box, but also secure that to our upper box. We do that through a series of those extrusions, like I mentioned in the travel trailer. So you'll see, if you look down here, these are our main frame connectors. Aluminum pieces with grooves in the center where we're going to be able to actually mount a separate sidewall section within that groove affixing the basement onto the overall box. Got it. So we're looking at the bottom of the truck camper right now. Correct. The manufacturing process of every truck camper starts upside down okay. and starts with that basement area because this is where you're going to be holding the majority of the weight, your holding tanks and lines. This is, you know, the heart of the truck camper. Here we have the opportunity to look at the superstructure that is a Lance camper. You'll see all of the angles that we work with in creating this structure. You can look in here and see how we use that again that system of extrusions to put in our under bed area to allow you to put up to 1500 pounds of weight up in this cab over area oh, wow. our campers are also weighted and designed where the majority of weight again is in the basement to where this area even though you can fit a lot of weight you're never going to have any issues of tipping and okay. you're going to be able to use the truck camper when it is on or when it's off the truck now what are you guys doing in terms of uh, quality control on these being the company that we are, quality is, is our number one uh, priority. You know, we, we've been known through the, our years of manufacturers being a very high quality manufacturer. And, and we take steps throughout all of the areas that we've been through in the factory. There are managers overseeing what's going on. All of those are dedicate, dedicated teams working on those specific jobs and making sure they're doing them correct every single time. Mm -hmm. Now, as we exit the factory and exit the assembly area, we get into uh, the, the last stages of quality control and you look at one of our green books and okay. this book actually started following the trailer in the assembly of the frame stage and each page of this book is going to go through the processes that went on at each stage during assembly so there are signatures and checks and balances of everything that is being done during the assembly process now as a unit exits the factory as we see here we have these papers that go through this book and double check everything and are going to address things that either need to be given a second look or something that needs to be remedied. That was a great tour. Learned a lot more about Lance. The 1475 trailer was really cool. We liked it. And we did a whole separate walkthrough of that. So look forward to that video as well. We're gonna have another video about the concept truck and camper that they put together for SEMA. Thank you so much for having Mike bring that out for us and thank you so much for the tour. Hey, thank you guys for coming by. Really appreciate you know. it. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel and we will see you next time.